Welcome back to Time Warner Cable's Local Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz. Our guest today is Brian Nestandi. He's a member of the California State Assembly. And so I want to talk to you about education funding. As you know, God, maybe 20 years ago, the voters passed Prop 98, which mandates that 40% of the state budget be spent on education. Even though the mandate's there, though, I understand it isn't always complied. With. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. What they've invented is a word called deferral. Mm. And what that means is we're gonna send education, say 40 billion this year, but not really. We're gonna give you 30 billion, defer the rest of that money, pay you later. Do they pay them later? Well, it, it's a year by year commitment. So in other words, right now in this year, we own $10 billion, we say we'll pay, but there's no obligation beyond next year. In other words, the next uh, assembly could decide, no, we're, we don't have the money, we're not going to pay it. But isn't that a violation of Prop 98 and therefore the California Constitution? It, it's a real get around. You're exactly right. The, the appropriate way, if you want to short the amount you're going to fund education, mm -hmm. is to suspend Proposition 98, and thereby there's a constant constitutional guarantee to pay the school districts back. They can sue the state if they don't get the money. Right now, they're at the will of the legislature, and it's a very bad way to budget. It's going to, because of deferrals, Riverside County is going to pay $100 million in interest payments on loans they have to get to cover those deferrals. That's $100 million well, to education spending that they're not going to get back. Why are they allowed to engage in this formula, as you described, are, shouldn't they be forced to pull that trigger in terms of suspending Prop 98? Doesn't the law they, require it? Absolutely. I, I wish so we why could get them to do it. That's why I've introduced legislation to oh, yeah, tell say you it. cannot do that. It's actually a constitutional amendment I've had to write. I went around the horn on how to do this, and basically I have to write into the cons Constitution that you must pay all the money in that year that you owe education. You cannot defer it to future well, years. But let me let me ask you this though. Look, we all honor our teachers, our students, our professors, but should we really have in our constitution that a certain percentage must be paid to a certain area? Is that really the well, best the, way the to budget? Well, the voters chose to do that in Proposition 98. It passed with a, a pretty healthy margin right. saying that is our priority. We want to prioritize education. And therefore, we should honor that commitment that the voters said, we want you to prioritize education. Therefore, we should do that and then force us to figure out the rest of the budget. Pay education first what we owe, then figure out the rest of the but budget. But philosophically, I, I, think about the cigarette tax, for example. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's going down to defeat. It's hard to know why, but it seems as if many folks felt as if they didn't want money set aside for one specific area. They thought, you know, the lockboxes weren't working anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, do we want to have lockboxes, as Al Gore would say, yeah. it, 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 because it just hamstrings you? And In the that other particular area, absolutely not, because it's, it's a, that's a bizarre way to do it. You're taking one small tax mm -hmm. to fund some unaccounted unaccountable bureaucracy mm -hmm. with this money bypassing legislature. It doesn't make sense. Education, once again, that's in our state constitution already. That is a priority of our, the, the people said that's the priority of why, of what we want government to spend money on, state government. So therefore, let's at least have a floor, it should be a floor of money going to education of so roughly 40%. Are you taking your proposed constitutional amendment to the voters? Are you taking it to the legislature? How's it going I'm taking it to the legislature to ask them to put this on the ballot for the voters to approve. And how, you need two-thirds vote? Correct. Have you spoken with your friends on the Democratic side of the aisle? Yes. And what is their view? Still working on them. Hoping that is, they will I mean, support the cause. What about, for example, the teachers unions? I mean, I could see them mm. supporting that. It, well, what they say is they say, well, we would rather have a deferral than a flat-out cut. And I said, that's a false choice and do not accept that because we should fund education fully, then make us do our job as legislators, find the rest of the money elsewhere. However, that, okay. however it is that we want to find that money, go do it. But fund your obligation, your constitutional obligation first, then deal with the rest of the budget. They're letting us off the hook by doing deferrals. And that's <laughs> Brian Nestani, thanks for joining us. I'm Brian Palmer. Thanks for watching Time Order Cable's Local Edition.